right. Hey, everybody. This is Dr. Craig Casper from NYHD and the Institute for Hearing and Balance, back with another episode of the Audiologist at Home episodes. And uh, that's basically me, Dr. Zweig, Dr. Naeem, uh, talking through computers, answering questions for all of you out there, things that we get in our practice on a day-to-day -day basis related, related to hearing and balance issues. And today I have Dr. Alexandra Zweig. What's up, Dr. Zweig? Hello. Good afternoon. Yep. Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm pretty well. Sunny out, so it's it's a good day. It is sunny out. I agree. Yeah. So we've we've done a bunch of these episodes, and it's kind of gone from me asking you guys questions to you guys asking me questions, and just mm -hmm. kind of going going around in circle here. So today, I think you have a question for me, right? I do. I have several. You have several. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> All right. So my first question is: What is the most common reason why people report dizziness? Most common reason why people report dizziness. Uh, there's a lot of different causes of dizziness, but I think the most common thing that people experience is something called BPPV, uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It's basically a really long word that uh, indicates that when you move your head or your body in a certain position, uh, you will experience vertigo, which is a sensation of the world spinning or you spinning. Mm -hmm. Um, now a lot of times we can experience vertigo spinning, um, but, um, with BPPV, it's not really long. It could be just for a few seconds or so, 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds or so. Typically anybody who experiences vertigo for a longer duration, it implies that it's not BPPV. Mm -hmm. Uh, but most common reason why people get dizzy is definitely BPPV. Um, basically what it is, uh, the inner ear consists of a couple of different components. Uh, we have the hearing part, which we test for a lot of our patients. And then we have the balance mechanism, which consists of uh, a, a portion of it, which tells us where we are in space, kind of moving forward, back, side to side, up and down, gravity sensing. And we also have these three canals, they're called semicircular canals that act like a gyroscope. So if we kind of move our head in angular positions, fluid moves in those, in those different canals and it tells us where we are in space. When it comes to BPPV, what happens is there's some debris and everybody hears crystals when they search up BPPV online, they, they talk about crystals. Mm -hmm. And there's some truth to that. There's these actual calcium deposits, these little crystals that are found in the, the gravity sensing inner ear portion. Uh, and for some reason they break free and they work their way into the gyroscope portion of the inner ear. And if we're not moving, those little crystals won't move. But when we move our head into a certain position, so we hear patients say, when I roll over in bed, when I bend down to tie my shoe, or when I look up on a shelf to take something off of a shelf, they'll get dizzy for a period of time. That's basically the crystal moving in a part of the inner ear where it's not supposed to in the gyroscope portion. And it creates some vertigo. The world feels like it's spinning. As soon as the crystals and the fluid settle out, we stop spinning. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one thing that I do want to make sure everybody understands is that the key word there is benign. There's nothing really life-threatening about this whatsoever, with the exception of falling, clearly. Uh, but it is benign, and there's a lot we can do about it. Yeah. So how would we determine that a patient does have BPV versus potentially another cause of dizziness? Yeah. When we take a look at diagnosing why someone is dizzy, there's so many different components to it from you know getting a really good case history and... We want to make sure that their blood sugars are in check and their blood pressure is in check, kind of all the other medical related things as well. Migraine comes into play. But when it comes to BPPV, uh, the one thing that we can do to properly diagnose it is something that's been around forever. And you don't need much equipment, although we use uh, video goggles where we can actually watch the eye movement. Mm -hmm. The eyes are, are very closely connected to our inner ear, and it tells us a lot uh, about what's going on with the, inner, with the inner ear. So keep in mind, these crystals are moving around in a part of the ear where they're not supposed to be. And by doing certain head movements and body movements and watching the eyes, something called the Dix Hall Pike maneuver, which has been around forever, we have the ability to actually visualize through the eyes what's going on with the inner ear. So it's as simple as taking a patient from a seated position to laying down and tilting their head either in the right or the left direction to determine if one of the canals might be involved. Other cases, we might actually rotate the head while the patient's lying supine or laying down. That'll tell us about different canals, but 
the basic the basic concept is we take the the person we move them in certain positions we watch their eye movement that tells us if they have bppv and if so which canal or canals might be involved okay and once we determine that then what is treatment for bppv yeah so once we determine which ear or ears and canal or canals might be involved that leads us down the path of, okay, so which specific repositioning maneuvers or exercises can we do to help back that debris out of the canal and back into the portion of the inner ear where it's supposed to be, where it's not going to cause this dizziness. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's several different maneuvers that are out there. Um, what I would suggest, there's a lot of videos also online that, that patients can do things on their own at home. I usually hesitate in, in telling patients to do that because sometimes you can actually back the debris, those little crystals up into a different portion of the inner ear and it can make you even more dizzy. And then it becomes a, a little bit of a, of a challenge backing that out and it makes the person more dizzy. Um, what I would suggest is making sure that they're seen by a professional, they're properly diagnosed, and then ultimately they're, they're taken through the appropriate repositioning exercises to make sure that they're clear. Ultimately, once we, we, we do the exercises to clear somebody, we'll redo those Epley maneuvers, those tests, to see if there's any residual debris left resulting in some residual eye movement. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is, we'll do the, the positioning again. Um, and it's not unusual to, have to actually have to go through it a couple of different times and maybe even a couple of different days to fully clear somebody. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's highly fixable. That's the bottom line, is that we can fix it. Okay. So what I've learned here is that the most common type of dizziness is BPPV. Um, we can determine if a patient has that by their case history, the positions that you put their head or body um, to determine ear specific or both ears or canal specific. And there's some movements that we can do from a professional, which we recommend um, to reposition that crystal back to where it belongs. Did I get that right? That is 100% correct. You know, the one other thing that I definitely want to add to the picture, we're, we're coming out of the winter here, and there is some evidence that uh, BPPV might be seasonal, and they believe it might have to do with vitamin D deficiency or vitamin D levels. So that's something that if, if someone out there actually has recurring BPPV, which is not uncommon, not a bad idea to have their general practitioner uh, check their vitamin D levels and see if there's need to supplement. There is some research around that as well. So not, not a bad thing to keep in your back pocket if you keep getting this year after year. Okay. So, Very interesting. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure. Uh, and I appreciate the question today. So uh, for all of you out there, if you have any questions for us coming up in the future, you can send them to the email that's coming across the bottom of your screen, info at newyorkhearingdoctors.com. Uh, myself, Dr. Zweig, and Dr. Naeem, We'll be out there uh, trying to answer those questions for you. And our website, if you want, you can go to newyorkdizzydoctors.com or even newyorkhearingdoctors.com. They'll send you to the same place to get more information about BPPV or any of the, uh, any of the other topics that we talk about uh, in these Audiologists at Home episodes. So thanks, Dr. Zweig. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. See you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Be well, stay healthy. You too. Take care. Take care.